Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 10 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn 3D graphics and animations in Python. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong cup of black coffee. That is straight up black coffee, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. That's your goat juice. You need to get you some because it is caffeine that fuels the engineering and computer science world. What I'm also going to need you to do is fire up your most excellent Visual Studio code. And as you're doing that, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who helped me out over at Patreon. It is your encouragement and your support that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what we are going to look at today. What we're going to do is give my solution to the homework assignment, which I gave you in lesson number nine. And what that homework assignment was, was to create an orb which continuously cycles through all types of beautifully varying colors. What I need to know is how many of you guys were successful in that and how many of you guys folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Leave a comment down below. Uh, even better yet, if you got a really cool orb that was changing colors in a magnificent way, take a screen capture of it and then uh, put it on YouTube, post a link down in the comments below, and that way we can kind of see other people's solution, other people's solution to this homework problem. But hopefully you guys had some fun with this and had some success with it, some mixing colors. And I will uh, kind of jump in and kind of show you the way that I'm going to develop this. And I probably should switch over here. And by now, I hope you guys realize that really the best way to program is you don't want to just jump in and start programming. What you want to do is you want to kind of map things out on a dry erase board or map things out on paper and have a strategy in place before you just jump in and start coding. And if you can kind of get it working on paper, there's a lot greater chance that you're going to have something that's working well uh, when you start coding. So let me come over here and uh, unfortunately our network is down today so I can't go and use my uh, graphics tablet and do it in a snazzy way with my uh, fancy graphics tape tablet. So we will have to go back old school and we will be using the webcam and we will be drawing. And let me see if I can can get a reasonable view here and then I will get out of your way. So this is the way that I like to think of it. I have three channels. I have red. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? Let me see if I can fix this webcam here. Those are not good colors. Uh, let's see here. Give me just a second, guys. I'll get this going. Uh, Okay, I think that's looking good. I uh, I need to get that focus. I'm sorry I didn't have this working. It looked good, and it does not look very good now. The autofocus doesn't seem to like to focus on this, so let's see if we can... Okay, that looks pretty good. We're just going to go with that. Pen still doesn't look too green, does it? I mean, too red. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I like to think in terms of a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And what you know is those red and green and blue channels are going to need to be changing. And the problem is if we just started red at zero, green at zero, and blue at zero and brought them up and down together, we would just be cycling from kind of like black to white and back to black and not going through that many different colors. And so this is, uh, this is the strategy that I thought through as a first try of making this work. So let's start with the red pen. 
and red, the red channel is going to start at zero and then the red channel is going to go in small increments up to one like that. Okay, so red is going to start at zero and it's going to go to one and then it is going to come back to zero like that. All right. Now, if I may green do the same thing, then like I say, you're not going to be getting a constant, constant variation of an infinite amount of colors. So what I want is I want green to kind of come and go up and down at a different frequency. And that way you're going to get this infinite variety of colors. So let's say we start at zero and we go up to one, but we go up to one twice as fast with green, like that. And if we go up twice as fast, then we're going to come down twice as fast too. And so green is going to go like this, going up and down at about twice the frequency of what red is doing. And then, well, what do we do with blue? I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to have blue in the middle between red and green. And so blue will go up and then come down at that same uh, at that same pace. I did not draw that good. Let me let me start again. I didn't get the coming downs right. So let me do it again. So red is going to start at zero. It's going to come up and then it is going to come down and it will look like that. And these are just relative. We'll put in specific numbers when we start coding. Then we said we wanted green to go twice as fast. I had it go up twice as fast, but I also need it to come down twice as fast. Okay, so it's going to come down at the same rate that it goes up. So it's going to be going up and down faster. And then blue is going to be in the middle. And so the blue will come like that. Let's see, it took blue one, two, three and a half to come up. So that would be a half, one, two, three to come down. And so it is going to come down right over here. Okay, so you see, then these things are going to repeat. So this would start coming up again, and this would start coming up again, and this would start coming up again. And so we've just got three different signals that are going up and down in a triangle wave, and they're going up and down at three different rates where you have a nominal one for the red, the green is twice as fast of a frequency, and then the blue is in between those, if that makes sense. Okay, I hope, I hope that makes sense for you. All right, so let's jump over here and go back to our Visual Studio Code view, and let's see if we can code this thing up. So I need to do a little bit of desktop management here get my keyboard where it is nice and handy and then we are going to come over to Visual Studio Code. We are working in the B V Python folder. We will come up with a new one color orb dot py the dot py is kind of important and boom we have ourselves a brand new fresh Python program just waiting to be written. I'm loving my coffee this morning. It is a morning for coffee. Okay, so we're going to come over here and uh, shut that off because we don't need that in your way. And then we'll start by importing our friend who? VPython. So from VPython, import star. Okay, now we're going to create our orb. So I will call it my orb is going to be equal to a sphere and we'll just give it a radius uh, of uh, radius is equal to one and we will give it a color is equal to color dot we'll start white like that and then I think that's probably all we need to do right now all right now I'm gonna have three different variables I'm gonna have my our channel, my red channel, and we'll start that at zero, just like in our picture. And then I'm going to have my green channel, and then we're going to start that at zero, just like in the picture. And then we are going to have our blue 
channel and we will start that at zero because remember we started them all at the same place and then they're going to go up and down at different rates well if they're going to go up and down at different rates we are going to need we are going to need different increment variables because we we're going to want that green to go up quicker so in each cycle its increment needs to be bigger but we will start with red so i'm going to have red increment this is how much we're going to increment the red channel each time through the while loop and we'll have a red increment of let's see let's just say that we're going to do a thousand steps between zero and one so the red increment will be 0 0.001 because that would give us a thousand steps to go from zero to one. And then we're gonna have the green increment, uh, the green incre increment, and that would be, let's go twice as fast. So that would be 0 0.002. That's gonna jump twice as far each cycle. And then what did we say? Blue increment would be halfway between those two. So what would be halfway between Ot ot one and ot ot two, it would be ot ot one five like that. And this should now have three different signals that are cycling at different rates. Well, now we need to fire off our while loop. So I'm going to say while true. When is true true? True is always true. So this is going to cycle forever. And what we will do is we will start by saying uh, if, if, uh, if, uh, we also, okay, it's, it's between zero and one. So if our channel, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's uh, increment things first. So, so we're going to say the new R chan is equal to the old R chan plus R increment okay and then the new green the new green chan value is going to be equal to the old green chan value plus green plus green increment that looks good and then the blue chan is equal to the blue chan plus blue increment so now I've incremented all of my values now let's apply that so how would we apply that we would say that my orb that's my object dot what dot color is equal to the vector because we got to give color three parts the vector and what what are we going to give it we're going to give it R chan we're going to give it green RGB green chan and then blue chan and I know you guys hate it when I end up in front of the work there you can see it all right I just hate being a little postage stamp in the corner of the screen I kind of feel like it minimizes my importance in this whole operation so I like this size for my head and then I'll just try to make sure my head doesn't get in the way of the coding okay so now we do that now we got to see is if we're hitting the ends of those ranges then we need to change them so what i'm going to say is if our chan is greater than or equal to one or if our chan is less than or equal to zero then what do we want to do well I want to make R increment equal to R increment times negative one okay so our increment starts positive and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger but when it hits our, our increment starts positive and then our channel gets bigger and bigger and bigger when our channel gets to one then our increment becomes negative and then it starts back down we've done this several times before so i hope that makes sense for you at this point and so i think i'm just going to snag this with a control c and then i'm going to paste it and got to get that if down here now we're going to do g so g channel g channel g increment 
fg increment and now we're going to come over here and we are going to do blue channel so this will be blue 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 okay so that's going to change it and then it will come back over here and it will cycle through i'm ready to give this a shot you guys have you seen me make a whole bunch of mistakes or is this thing going to run let's try it all right here we go running it no errors so far that looks encouraging this is popping up and nothing is happening ah maybe one thing at least one thing i know i might have done more than one thing wrong but i didn't put a rate in here so let me put a rate and let's go pretty fast let's say 500 just to see if we can get something moving here let's see if we can get something moving all right no errors that's good let's see if we can make it come to life now kill the old one run the new one do you guys forget to kill your old one sometimes and this thing is still dead this thing is dead nothing's happening all right let's see what we did wrong okay red channel green channel blue channel R chan is R chan plus R int. Green chan, green chan plus green int. And then I'm applying my orb and dot color and it's vector. My color is equal to vector R chan, green chan, blue chan. Those darn things should be moving, shouldn't they? Okay let's see if we go let's make it go faster maybe it's just going real slow let's uh, change those increments now there's a hundred steps so certainly we should see something going on pretty fast here shouldn't we and this thing is dead as can be it is as dead as can be so uh, let's see maybe we have some errors in here did you guys see me make a mistake? Okay, I'm gonna kill this. And this time I'm not gonna look at the uh, graphic. I'm just gonna look at the little window down there to see if I get some error. So I don't wanna see, okay, here's an error. Oh, uh, if R chan is greater than or equal to one, R chan, ah, okay. So I do have an error in here. Did you guys catch that R chan? like right there and that is going to be on every one of those that's the problem with copying and pasting you see i made r chan and i ended up with an uppercase in there okay hopefully you guys caught that i'm going to go back to my original intuition of 0 0.001 0 0.002 and 0 0.0015 and let's give that a try shazam look at that color orb constantly changing through all these different amazing colors guys i love watching these uh color variations like this and and i i love watching this what i do think is i do think it's going a little bit too fast it's cycling through those colors a little bit faster than what i like so i'm going to go down to let's say 200 and this is just kind of a matter of taste but you see we're just constantly changing those colors okay that is going a little slower going to magentas and then we're going to a green turning back to a blue turning to a cyan and then a purple to magenta to green and deep green and uh, if, if you really pay attention to this it isn't repeating but it is coming back through the color wheel on some similar colors and so <coughs> this is just exactly what i was hoping to go through and i'll be honest with you i like making these things and i like to just sit and watch them you can also make these with an rgb led and put like a little ping pong ball on top of it and you can write little programs that will do uh that will do this when we start talking between vpython and arduino we will probably come back and revisit 
visit this where we'll have a virtual LED and we'll also have a real LED and they will be doing similar types of things. Okay, I love this. You guys, leave me a comment down below if you had been successful. But let me tell you the one thing that I don't like about this and that is because this one's going up and down faster and then this one a little slower and then this one a little slower. You will peri periodically reach points where just uh, randomly they will all end up low at the same time and so not only like there it's very dark not only right now are we changing the colors we are also changing the brightness because sometimes you end up with a bunch of low values and so the colors are changing at the same time the brightness is changing and so you might have like a really really cool color combination but it might be at a point where all three values are low and the color doesn't seem very bright so i think a much better brightness orb would be one where you always have a constant brightness so i want a constant brightness orb and i'll come back over here and kind of show you what i mean by that so i will come back and uh let's switch back to the camera okay there's going to be times where where all of them are coming down so you can see like right here you're going to have a low intensity red and then there's going to be times that they're just going to line up where the blue is going to be low and the green is going to be low and so all of three of these are going to be low at the same time and so what i always want is i want a constant brightness now i can't say a co constant brightness of one because that would mean that if red is on the other two would have to be off and there wouldn't be any mixing so i want constant mixing but i want the magnitude of the brightnesses to be two so what does that mean that means that I want, that means that I want, let me uh, come back over here so I can look at my variable names. What I want is I want R channel plus green channel plus blue channel those three numbers I want to add those three numbers up and I want that to always be two so all three of them are constantly changing but their sum is always two and that way it's always a constant brightness so you could have something like red could be one and green and blue could both be a half all right now this if you guys really like a challenge this is your homework for next week to go create a color orb of constant intensity constant brightness with that constant brightness being two now you can go away and try to figure out how to do it on your own uh, or what you can do is you can pause the video right now and I'll give you some hints so if you want the hints keep watching and I'll kind of draw out how I would see doing this and then you can go away and code it so if you keep watching you're going to get some hints and then you can go code it on your own and if you want no hints then just stop right now because I'm fixing to kind of draw something that would help you see how you could go out and code it okay so this is what I would do for you guys that want the hints what I would do is let's start with red okay so I'm going to start here at zero it is going to come up to one like this okay it is going to stay at one for five arbitrary units and then it is going to come back to zero all right now at this point at this point red is one right red is one well what does that mean well that means that uh, green could be one and if green is one then blue has to be zero well then over here I could switch those and say blue is one 
and green is zero. So that means that green would need to go from one to zero while red is one and blue would need to go from zero to one. So do you see this little X pattern? Red plus green plus blue always equals two. Here it's the red and the blue make two. Here it's the red and the green make two. And here the red is one, the green is a half, and the blue is a half. So you see that little pattern is going to do it. And then once you see that, it should be pretty easy. So then what we're going to do is we are just going to repeat this. And now one of the things that you are going to see is, now notice this, now the green comes up. Now the green needs to stay up okay and then here as the blue came up once it comes up it needs to stay up and then blue goes down okay now that red is down red needs to come up and then what does red do red stays up now look at this red is one blue is one green is one Red is one, and then blue is one, green is one. And so you see you create this pattern where they're constantly going to be shifting, but there's always going to be a magnitude of two on the color. And I think that we should just see all types of magnificent colors when this happens. And probably on this one, I'm going to run it a little bit slower so that we can just see all of these different colors develop. Okay, I've given you the little picture of it. Now, what you got to do is you've got to go out and code this thing. Okay, you got to go out and code this thing. Okay, guys, I hope you're having as much fun. Let's go back to our magnificent orb here. Let's go back to our magnificent magnificent orb uh, there it is okay here is our magnificent orb I hope you guys are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them in a little bit about kind of some of our future directions for the for the next lessons you know again the next one we're going to do one more on color because color is so important you really need to understand how to mix these colors and also I want you to get comfortable with doing these wheels where we have these while loops and a lot of different things changing inside of that one while loop because that's really an important thing of getting these animations that we're trying to do working. So next week will be the, the last thing that we're going to do on color. And then the next thing that we're going to do is start understanding orientations or start under uh, understanding kind of pointing how we're pointing so right now like if I have an object I'm trying to look for a nice uh, a nice object okay let's say that this is my rectangle or this is my little box right now what we've learned is we can make the box whatever size we want so we know how to do size we know how to do position we can move it in X we can move it in Y we can move it in Z we can make it all types of different sizes right well the other thing is how to orient it not just in position in space but what if you wanted it to point like what if you wanted it to point this way or what if you wanted it to point this way you see the orientation angle how you are pointing it that's what we'll start with after we do the uh, after we do the solution to the color uh, to the color assignment we'll start worrying about orientation now why do you worry about orientation because things in the real world are not always aligned with your X Y and Z axis so we've got to understand how to orient things at different angles like imagine if you wanted to do a round dial and that dial would have tick marks on it those tick marks are not all lined up with the axis right those tick marks are going to be at different angles as they go around your dial so we've really got to understand those angles then after we sort of really understand those angles then probably we are going to be the to the point that we're going to hook up the Arduino to vPython and we're going to have vPython talking to the Arduino and the Arduino talking to vPython and that is where really cool things start happening because then we can start developing cool visuals for our Arduino projects. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in today. Really appreciate your guys' comments down below. If you like the video, give us a, th a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and then share this with other people because we need more people in the world doing useful
useful things like coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. This is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.